Well, good Monday morning and welcome back to a little good news for today from the book of Philippians. I've really been enjoying these uh, meetings with you and the little comments that you uh, put up on our Facebook page. It's uh, just encouraging to know that someone's listening to these. I'm enjoying them. It's the Word of God. How can I not enjoy it? So we're in Philippians chapter 3 and Paul is writing for our encouragement. Uh, in verse 15, he says, All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. Now, you remember what he's talking about. In chapter 3 earlier, he was saying uh, he uh, considers all his trophies of the past that he used to worship, things that he was proud about. He thinks differently about them now. They are dung to him. They are refuse. He's consumed by pressing on in the gospel, knowing Jesus Christ, of advancing the gospel. That's all he cares about. And so he says, all of us then who are mature should take a view of such things, should take such a view of things. And I guess not everyone's mature. But Paul is saying, those of you who are mature, and hopefully you want to be mature, and if you know what maturity is, you'll seek to behave in a mature way. But he's obviously saying that there are some people who are not straining toward what is ahead, like Paul pressing on toward the goal. It may be that there are brand new Christians who are just trying to figure out what it means to be a Christian, and they haven't entered into this um, forward-moving, consuming ministry that Paul has. But you will. You can't be a mature Christian without getting to the point where you say, I want in. I don't want to just be a Christian. I want to do the work of a Christian, which is the mission. So Paul says everyone who's mature gets to that point. And if on some point you think differently, and there are people who thought differently than Paul, he said, that too, God will make clear to you. I find that very interesting. That, that Paul doesn't say, okay, let, let me just um, beat you up a little bit or, or let me argue with you. Uh, Paul has said many things that were very clear. And he's quite confident that where there is a stubbornness or even some kind of learning issue, or it might be a heart issue, Paul says... God can make that clear to you. I'm not going to argue. If you know the Lord, if you are a disciple in any shape or form, uh, if and if you're honest and alone with God, he'll make that clear to you. You'll get on board eventually with the truth. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. In other words, what you are convinced of, live up to that. Be faithful to what you know already. Don't put everything on hold because you haven't understood something that mature people understand. Then he says, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Now, Paul gets into a lot of trouble for saying that. Because everybody says, oh, I look to Jesus. I only look to Jesus. I don't look to anybody. Well, sometimes that's a way that we can disassociate Jesus or put Jesus somewhere and kind of reinterpret Jesus and create kind of a little learning or a catechism or a, a world, a Christian view that is really shaped by our own interests. And Paul says, here's how it works. Jesus has appointed apostles and he has put in our lives godly people. And we are to know them and to use them as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. It doesn't mean you're not keeping your eyes on Jesus. It simply means that you're learning in community. You're a, a family of families, and you're looking at those who have, um, who are mature, and you're saying, "I'm." They're not perfect, 
but they're a good model of someone who deals with their sin in a mature way and who is on mission. For So Paul says, I've often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many uh, who, who want you to follow them, and there are many, there are other people. Paul says they live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. So Paul assumes that everybody's going to be following somebody. Even people who say they just follow Jesus, they're going to follow their version of Jesus that is affirmed by somebody else. And Paul painfully acknowledges that there are people out there who gather a following, and it's certainly not, they're not following Paul, they're not following the teachings of Paul, and he describes them as people who are headed towards destruction, their God is their stomach. In other words, they're in it for themselves. Their mind is set on earthly things. They, they want a gathering. They want prominence, whatever it is they want. And if this were not a real possibility, Paul wouldn't have to warn people. The fact is that it's very attractive to follow people who jazz up the gospel. And Paul says they're enemies of the cross. And so the way that they present the gospel, it's, it's, it's easy, it's popular, it's shiny. We've got people like that all over the place, Christians so-called, leaders so-called, who gather people away from the example of Paul, who knew what it was to suffer, to be single-minded in his desire to live for God. But, but there are others who say, chill out. Relax, a Christian life, it's, a, it's, it's joy, it's peace, it's a cakewalk, it's abundant life. See, there should be no stress. Paul said, don't follow those people. They're using you. Their mind is on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body. This is the, 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 the laser focus that Paul had. He was so excited about what God was doing and, and the future, the hope that he had. It says... This dominates us. We eagerly wait for that. And what we do in the meantime is motivated and driven by the knowledge that one day Jesus is going to come back. And these, these bodies that some people worship, at that time, they will be wonderfully and gloriously restored. So be encouraged by that. Be warned by that. Make sure that you're following people whose lives are examined, who are living well in community, whom you know from up close. They're not on the TV or computer. Well, I'm on the computer, but you know what I mean. They're, they're, they're touchable. I'm, I guess I'm not touchable. I'm getting myself in all kinds of trouble here. But you know what I'm saying. You want to have people as your examples whose lives are examined. And Paul said in this way, follow him and there's other people in your life who you can follow as well and uh, don't apologize for that if you don't have one yet look for someone and tell them you're watching them and uh, they will be extra careful to make sure that they're following christ i just wanted to encourage you with that today that that was a joyful thought from paul in prison for our encouragement thanks for watching today